What is up guys, it's the Nimnim here, and today welcome to another Nimnim Demos. I haven't done one of these in a while. This game is called Monster Loves You, and from my interpretation, it's a, uh, like, choose your own story kind of game. So, uh, let's get right into it. It's mainly reading. Help me begin your story. How does it go again? So, not really much I can do here. Long ago, deep in the forest, monsters call the Whale Mist. I'm assuming that's how you pronounce that. That's right. Long ago, nestled in the heart of the forest, was the monster village of Omen. You are born from slime that holds the memory of monsters known for. So this is kind of the gist of the game. Uh, you're being told a story by, I can assume, an elder or someone that who, uh, knows your life or whatever, and you're basically filling in the blanks and telling them what you did. It's really cute and stuff, so, uh, I like being violent. Actions and attitude. You're not awake yet, but soon your first eye will open. Your simple dreams will give way to life itself. You dream of fighting and eating and screaming, facing frightening enemies unafraid, protecting innocent monsters from harm. Let's do this. Bravery, plus nine. So we have stats in this game. You, you can see it down here. Bravery, cleverness, ferocity, honesty, and kindness. And as you go through different missions and select different uh, choices, you'll get points for each category. And it'll show you what kind of monster you are. Your body is turning and twist. Your body is turning and twisting, growing solid in the middle of a great vat of green slime. It's time to be born. So, uh, there's supposed to be more options on different types of these screens, but all I can do now is be born, so. You awaken in the chilling season, just as the air begins to turn crispy cool. Onward. Your eyes open, you're a morsel, just barely born. You float in the spawning vat. Dozens of other morsels are exploring, flailing, and stealing food from each other. So, kick out your legs, or try to swim. I don't know the difference between these two, so I'll try to swim. Another morsel swims toward you. It opens its mouth to show a set of small, sharp teeth. It bites you. Uh, I swim away from the morsel, so this is saying, like, you're scared, ah, get away from me, obviously. This is, uh, I'm going to murder you. You pause, unable to believe that another morsel is trying to eat you. After a moment, you snap out of it and start to move again. Kill it. Gur, you rip into the violet morsel. It has fangs, but you have claws. Your first snarl. Excellent. When the fight is over, you're chewing on the other morsel's eye, which is all that remains. Serves him right for attacking me. So, this is pretty much the entire game. I'll show you once we get to it, but uh, there's a screen for missions that you can choose. They're different, like, mini-stories that define your character, and you do a couple before you move on in different stages in life. So, splash, flutter, splish, squeak. Another morsel is too weak to swim properly. It's sinking toward the bottom of the spawning vat. Uh... Let's save him. You feel a deep sense of injustice at the smaller morsel's impending demise. If only you could do something about it. So we're gonna save the morsel. Swim to the morsel, determined to act. Let's do that. As you push up, the morsel's dead weight forces you down. Your legs rest against the bottom of the spawning mat where they begin to squish. Your feet are breaking up among the solid clumps of on the floor of the vat. Your legs are gone now, but, but you stretch your arms and body, changing your slimy shape to hold the other morsel up to the surface of the slime. Yes, the morsel is saved. So my legs are gone now. Your body dissolves as you push one last time, the other morsel breaks apart. Two dissolving morsels reach for each other, come together in a single mass, a new 
morsel. You two are and will always be one. You have grown too big for the spawning vat. You must move on to the next stage of life and become a monsterling. Alright. You're going to get into some trouble, which is great. Exercise your bravery, cleverness, ferocity, kindness, and honesty. Those are the five categories you can see down here. What kind of monster will you be? So this is the uh, hub for the first stage of your life. And you have, see, these are the different adventures that I was talking about that you can go on. And it'll determine what kind of monster you are. So I'll do eight of them. I'll do the first eight, and then I'll end the video and share my opinion. So we've got a rat, a thing, goat, shield. Let's do the human. Some monsterlings gather at the cave entrance to watch the sunrise. Suddenly, a tall figure appears in the bushes. Its shadow stretches toward you like a knife. What is it? It's so big. Bigger than six monsterlings. So tall and thin, walking on two legs. Blistry squeaks. It's a human. Oh no. Most of the monsterlings flee into the cave, but Weemie trips and his ankle goes... <coughs> that was my interpretation of the noise. Whatever. The tall creature starts at the... Blah. The tall creature starts at the sound, then walks toward you with long strides. Stay and help Weemie. There's always something I can do. You stand over Weemie. He's small enough to carry, but there might not be time. The quick footsteps are getting closer, and the shadow is upon you. Ooh. Pick up Weemi and carry him inside. Cleverness zeroed. You made it, the footsteps come closer. A tall, skinny elder comes into the cave. Old Th Thuldris looks more like a stork than a human now, but she doesn't have the sun behind her. Laugh it off. Hee hee hee. Uh, alright, so that was one of the stories. Basically, eight of those, each just each diff each one has a different topic. So this one looks fun. Looks like I'm gonna eat some stuff. Elder Marinus floats in a pool of cave water, puffing her body like a bulbweed. She points at something deep under the water. Will you get that for me, little one? But you can't swim. Yeah, I can. I swam. Uh... Elder Marinus, obviously an elder, can interpret that. It's one of the bigger, uh, aliens? Monsters, yeah. You jump in and pull yourself along the bottom of the pool with your claws. You easily reach the object, which is a funny yellow rock. Return to the surface. So, that was, uh, pretty clever. We got plus 15 clever points. You roll it back to Marinus, pats you on the head. Clever one. Well done. Some are really short, some are really long, so... Difference. Let's do... Scared. Three gangly adolescent monsters wander into the cave and start poking gob claws with sticks. She tries to get away, but they surround her. Blistery starts to cry. So we can save Blistery. Uh, we can not care about her, but and we can join in. So these are, yeah. Let's save her. You approach to the conflict. No way you can fight them all. Convince them to leave with words. Oh yeah. <laughs> Keep your sticks. Taste these claws. You whirl into the first monster's long, bird-like legs. She leaks red slime as you move on to the stomach of the next bully. They flee, convincing a small army convinced a small army is attacking them. So we don't have any honesty points. Let's do this one. Smark falls from a high ledge. He falls all the time. But wait, what's that? It's a big bat trying to gnaw pieces out of him. Oh, 
I'm gonna be an asshole. I haven't been an asshole yet. Let's cheer for the bat. <laughs> <laughs> yep. You wave your arms up and try to come up with a song of bat support. It's not very good. Gob claws and blister you run over and drive the bat away. Everyone frow frowns at you, especially Smark. Alright. Halfway towards leaving and becoming an adolescent. Firm up your personality as much as you can. So that means we only have four more stories to go. And uh, once we do, we'll enter the next stage of life and we'll get more stories. That's basically how the whole game goes. Elder Marinus leads you and some other monsterlings to a secluded grotto at the back of the cave. What's that light up high on the wall? Is the question. It's a rusty iron cage. There's something inside it. Sticks and rocks, maybe? It's a collection of bones. Marinus says this is a human skeleton. If you, if you can get it out of this cage, you may play with it. The cage rests on a, lar on a ledge several monster lengths high, and only one monster, long monster length wide. The lock rusted away long ago. Afraid ropes hang from the bar. Uh... Get help from a friend. You ask Nash Gash for a boost. Nash Nash. Nash Nash. Yeah, it's Nash Nash. For a boost. She laughs and throws you up onto the ledge. You crack your head, but you're there. Let's let everyone play. You let the other monsterlings in on the fun. Nash Nash starts choking when she tries to eat some of the littlest bones. Do that. That did it. She spits out the little noodles? No, no, noodles. Not noodles. It seems puzzled. I can crunch animal bones easy. How come human bones are so tough? Perhaps that is the lesson. Don't eat humans too much. They're tough. Uh, let's do this one. Blistery climbs on top of the lich pile. She refuses to let any other monsterling eat, claiming herself ruler of the lich pile. She is an idiot. Let's find an elder. Elder. I wouldn't. Uh, no. Destabilize the pile. While Blistery's fending off some of, some of the other mon monsterlings, you slide up the lichen pile. There's a huge pe piece of lichen towards the bottom, and a big old bear bone down there. I don't know what lichen is, is the problem. Let's grab the bone. You grab an old bone and twist, the lichen pile collapses. Blistery is buried in stuff. Stuff? What is the stuff? Other monsterlings rush in and start eating or kicking blistery or both. Alright, so we got two more. Let's do the three-eyed goat and then the fox. Marinus leads a group of the monsterlings to the scrape goat's pit in a portent square. Uh, go along with Marinus. Elder Marinus escorts everyone down into the pit. The scrape goat stands and trots over to her. It's filthy, and its breath smells like warm grass. So it's like a mutated goat with three eyes. Watch the scrape goat in action. Marinus turns her back on the scrape goat. The goat uses its long horns to gouge at her hide, moving some dirt and several parasites. So she's clean now? Yuck. Clean monsters. Yuck, yuck. Marinus smiles down at you. Don't claw it till you felt it, little one. It's good to get things out of your hide, and not just for us. Lessons? Yeah. Marinus withdraws to the edge of the pit, but she looks from you and the other monsterlings to the filthy, matted hair of the goat. Let's clean it. Marinus is delighted at your offer. You stay behind when the other monsterlings go back to the cave. You run your claws through the goat's thick, wiry hair. Dirt, leaves, and twigs fall to the ground. Hey, that's nice. The goat shivers and stamps its hooves in a little dance of pleasure. When you're done, Marinus comes to take you back to the cave. 
I escape code. Bah. Yep. All right, so this is our last one. Uh, I said I'd do the fox. I think I'm gonna do the spider actually. Spiders. Something is scurrying along the walls and the ceiling and the floor. Spiders as big as and round as plates. They've swarm. They're swarming into the cave. I can't tell if they're friend or foe. One does not simply walk into plate spiders. How will you approach them? The other monsterlings look at you as though you've gone mad, but they change their minds when the larger spider asks for directions to the whale mist. We got lost, so sorry to bother you. Let's help him out. You tell the lead spider, go out that way, then turn left, then just stay on the street until there isn't a street anymore. Everyone starts. Everyone laughs as the spiders depart. Alright, so that was it. Zero days left, and then we're initiated into the transition. Oh my, you wake up and find that you're no longer a little monster like you're growing up. Elder Marinus calls the oldest monster to gather in a group. One of the oldest ones now, so you should join them. She looks grave. Marinus shuffles down the long tunnel, turning this way and that among dozens of forking passages. Keep going. Marinus stops in a warm, humid chamber with a pit in the floor. She points to the pit, which seethes with thick mist. Marinus pushes you in with a sweep of her tail. Ah. It all seems so reckless. You fall in, fall some more. Then fall, and you're falling. And other monsterlings are falling? Yes, some of them are crying. You can't see through the mist. Or is it fog? Maybe clouds. Thones and groans and whispering screams. Where is this? It must be somewhere. You land on smooth, flat stone. Despite the swirling vapor, the floor is dry as a bone. You hear the other monsterlings breathing nearby. Some of them are still above you, still falling. Alright, let's cushion the fall. Oof. You don't see who who you helped. Whoever it rolls away into the thick fog without a word. You rejoin some of the other monsterlings at the edge of the mist. There are more passages out out of here than you can count. Some monsterlings begin to look panicked while others look determined. Take charge. The other monsterlings watch you curiously. Uh, lead the way personally. You strike out with courage and confidence. The other monsterlings follow you. Choosing turns and forks at random, you soon walk into a cave full of even thicker mist. The chamber swirls with the mist. Smoke, fog, vapor. Except it's not any of those things. It's ghosts. Hundreds of them, large and small. They're everywhere. One by one, the pale ghosts begin to turn their attention to you. Their eyes glow different colors. The ghosts speak in many voices, all hollow and distant, all in unison. They ask you, do you fear? Yeah. Your answer echoes back to you, louder and louder. You crouch down, trying to hide from the noise, and fall unconscious. Alright, so that's the first section of the game. And it's the beginning of the game is called Monsterling Hood. So, I'm not sure what this one is, or this one, either of these. But these are our uh, percentage of what we are. We're mostly smart. Uh, brave comes next. We're ferocious a little bit after that. And then we're honest less of the time. And then I don't know what the present or this is. Alright, so that was, that was the first section of the game. And so... We start living as an adolescent monster now. So, uh, that was the first part of the game. All the other parts repeat basically the same way, except with different stories and such. And, uh, it's pretty fun. It's a really cheap game. It's really, uh, has its moments. It's pretty funny sometimes. And, oh, that's kindness. That's what that was. 
and uh, I'd recommend it. Yeah, if you're looking for a little bit of entertainment here and there, it's not like all that diverse. Most of the stories are the same, I think. Each time you play through it, you just get different results. So if you're into this kind of game, just uh, choose your own adventure, click your options or whatever, and it's for you. Because it's really fun, it has a nice soundtrack that I don't mind listening to over and over and over again, while I'm playing it at least. And it's a, it's a relaxing game, so uh, i definitely recommend it. Only if you like this sort of thing, though. So, that's it. Thanks for watching. And I'll see you guys in the next one of whatever uh, I post. So, see you then. Thank you.